Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so delighted today to be joined by the wonderful, wonderful Ava Michelle to talk all about her Netflix movie, Tall Girl 2. Um, and kind of going back to when you first auditioned for, for the first movie in the series, um, I was kind of interested in the space that you went into the audition with because, you know, you've talked extensively about how you'd been auditioning for a lot of roles and gotten really, really close to booking a lot of things. And the feedback you were getting was always about your height, which is something that obviously you can't change that you know it's not something that you can like go and work on and more acting classes and studying a certain aspect is going to change the outcome frustratingly and so when you were going in for this role and it was like that's actually an attribute now was there a difference in kind of the mentality that you had or the space that you found within yourself when you were going into the audition room knowing that that wasn't going to be a roadblock at any point it was it was honestly such a different experience because i was i would always go into auditions being like okay i have to be so good that my height doesn't matter and in this i was like wait my height is my asset and my slate i actually slated my height because i normally round down just a little bit um so yeah going in there my i actually had confidence in my height and could really relate to the character so much that i just felt like she was already inside of me. So I feel like that's searching in other roles to where you're really trying to like find where the character lands. Um, she was just really, really there. So I talk about this all the time. I think that whole audition process while being the most nerve wracking thing I've ever been through, it felt like it was so calm and right. And every step just felt like in its place. I've never, like, I would be so nervous outside of the waiting room and then I would get in the room and I feel like it all just kind of go away, which I've never experienced before. Um, but I just feel like that's how it is when it's right, possibly. No, that's really amazing. And yeah. did that also in a similar way change the relationship that you developed with Jodi as a character as you were going through the script for the first film and really figuring out a lot of the essence of who she was? Because like you just said, this is a character that you were really able to bring a lot of yourself into in a completely different way as well. And then you had that freedom of just like a lot more confidence within the role. Yeah. I think it, you know, it's, it's bringing my life experiences as well as, you know, everything that she's going through obviously, but I feel like our life journey and where we were starting that film was very similar. I mean, I used to not be insecure about my height. I truly feel like a lot of your insecurities don't come from something that's inside. They come from external, like people making comments on it and me not getting roles because of it. So Jody and I had a very similar, like we were struggling with that. We didn't know how to embrace it. And we both had people around us who were telling us to embrace it. So I think that honesty, just, just coming into it um, was, was made it a lot easier to, you know, play her and, and really see that journey through. And, and talking of, of the relationship that Jodi has with her insecurities in the first film, I think that's why it's so great that we have the second film because it gets to explore her as a character you know, when she's in a space of having overcome that, but obviously you never fully overcome that. So it's just different obstacles and different things that she's facing. And so when you were stepping back into her as a character for the second movie, um, how did you look at, okay, what are, what are the spaces that used to sometimes make her feel a lack of confidence that she now feels really comfortable in? And where are the new lines going to be? You know, there's the obvious one with the school musical, but there's a lot of little nuances of, of spaces and things that she's experiencing for the first time in her relationship and friendships. Yeah that still kind of create that, that feeling for her in different ways. Yeah. I think there's, there's so much new going on. And I think, you know, just like you said, it's, it's not like you overcome or all of a sudden you're just confident and everything in your life is going to be great. And I think being able to address that is, is really important because sometimes we feel like we've conquered it and, and we're liked and we're popular and we're going through all of stuff. We have a boyfriend, like she has so much good going for her. And I think that's Part of her confusion is like, why is this happening now? But it it does. And I think Jody is is so brave by putting herself into the musical. I mean, that's something that is scary. And for her to go through that fear and conquer everything that's happening in her head, I think it's it's really important. But yeah, I mean, I think it's really just great to address high school and all of the first that you're going through. You're learning who you are as a person. And she's in a relationship that she doesn't totally know how to communicate with him yet and she has a new friendship that's happening and she's trying to figure out her sister dynamic and her family dynamic everything's changing so there's there's a lot a lot going on for her 
And what was it like working with Griffin, who plays Dunkelman in this film? You know, only about three months have passed since the last film ended, which isn't that much time. And yet, you know, for them at that age and going into their first relationship, transitioning from a friendship, it's a very different dynamic that the two of them have than the, in the first film. Um, and so how did the two of you work together to really figure out what is their dynamic together as a couple, you know, and then what are the idiosyncrasies of their communication, the way that they're still trying to figure each other out in new ways to them? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Griffin and I honestly like we because the first film we had just met so it was you know obviously a different dynamic between us but I think you know coming into this one we just really respected each other as as artists and wanted to come in and just really have an arc and a full relationship for these characters and so I think one of our most pivotal points was when we were shooting the date scene and we both got there and we had our scripts and we were like reading them and he was like does something stick out to you? And I was like, yeah, this part. And he's like, I know, but this part, but like, I don't think she would say that. And I don't think he would say that to her. Like we had this whole moment of like, this isn't our characters. And so we brought it up to Emily and just kind of rewrote the scene on um, the spot. And just, it was a lot of improv and a lot of, you know, I think one of the biggest things in a, in a first relationship that you learn is, is how to communicate. And I think that Jody and Dunkelman have loved each other as friends and told each other everything when they were friends, but all of a sudden they're boyfriend, girlfriend, and they're trying to protect each other so much and try to act like everything's okay because they're finally in this relationship, but they are now not telling them the hard things that they're going through. And I think that's kind of ultimately what causes what happens in their relationship is because they don't fully communicate that and lean on each other like they should. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, there's, there's a lot of complexity in some of the scenes with the two of you together where like you said, they so want to be able to communicate, but they're just not sure how to find the words or how to say certain things out loud to each other. Yeah. Was yeah. it really easy for you to kind of look at the script and, and look at a lot of the conversations and really find the moments where there's a lot of subtext between them in those moments where they're having an entirely different dialogue with one another? Yeah. And I think one of my favorite things about Jody and Dunkelman's relationship is just that they know each other so well. Like they know every single look, every single pause, like they know each other so well. So it was just fun to play with that. And you're not really guessing as much. You're like, oh, okay. I know that I identify that. Okay. Let's figure it out. So um, one of my favorite moments in the scenes that we have is um, when he says, I love you. And she's so shocked. And then he totally freaks out and she's just um, watching him freak out. And it's just like, this is why she loves him. Like, he's so adorable. Like you just feel that in that moment of like, oh, wow, I love him. Like he's freaking out right now. And it's the cutest thing ever, um, which I don't think that you would have that in just a normal, um, like very romantic relationship that's just came out of that, you know? And with the, with what you were saying before about for the two of you as well, coming back into the second film was was kind of just a different extra level of comfort, familiarity and trust in working on scenes and yeah. and really being able to have those conversations about actually, I, I think both of us would approach it this way. Was that very much the dynamic across the board in working on this film? Because you're coming back with, you know, all the same core cast members that you really get to work on a lot more textured scenes with one another because there's more depth that you're discovering with these characters. Yeah, for sure. I think there was so much more collaboration in this film. I mean, the the first Tall Girl was my first film ever. So I, I'd like to say that I spoke my mind, but I really, um, I didn't because I, I was still learning so much. And so I feel like when I came back, we all just had more confidence and in, in knew our characters to where we could make those statements or those suggestions and they could be taken seriously and respected, which I really I really loved that we could just sit down and be like, hey, we thought of this idea. Like, can we just do a take that's kind of what we're thinking for it? And um, the whole movie just felt like that, just very collaborative. And um, yeah, it, it was very cool to explore that and also gain the confidence in myself that I might have good ideas sometimes. <laughs> I mean, since the first film, like you just said, was your first time in a feature film, you know, and it's also your first time leading a feature film as well, which are both two kind of monumental moments. What yeah. were some of what were some of the moments or things that you remember that were real learning curves for you or things that you really took away from the experience of that first one that you were able to then bring on to the second one, like being able to advocate for certain things for your character? Yeah, I feel like there's there's so much that I learned, but I really I really remember from the so the first movie, our first week was in my house with my family. So those were the first scenes that I did. So it was 
um, Angela, Steve, and Sabrina the entire time. And they are incredible, like just so, so gifted and just watching, especially, um, you know, Angela and Steve, they've been in the industry for such a long time and watching them on set and their kindness on set and, you know, just how they walked around a set and how they talked to every crew member and were so kind. I feel like we forget about that sometimes. Like the, the acting is really important, but who you are on set and especially as leading a film and it's, you know, as much as who the director is on set, you are, really setting the environment for the film that's going to be people's lives for the next three months. So I feel like watching that and learning that from them was, was really important, but also just sitting down at that dinner scene um, in the first film, I feel like just sitting at a table and watching them all work. I felt like I was the observer (laughs) in the entire thing because it was just like learning so much and how free they are with it and how they just let everything go. And there's no pressure on them um, was was really, really great to learn. Yeah. And I, I love the relationship that Jody has with her parents, because yeah. even if they don't say or do the right thing, or they're doing something slightly embarrassing, they're always leading from the right place. And, you know, that, that love and care also really comes through in the scene in this movie where Jody's having a panic attack for the first time and she doesn't know what's happening. And their instinct is like, they pull the car over, they get out and they're there with her. Um, and so how did you approach filming that scene? Because I know that you also did a lot of re- research and were very kind of conscientious and, and also it was very much about thinking, well, what are the experiences that Jody's having and what would her response to this be? Because panic attacks can come in so many different forms. Yeah, I think it was, you know, I obviously felt a lot of pressure because this is something that that a lot of people deal with and I didn't want to portray it wrong or in any way offensive um, because I personally haven't had an anxiety attack, but I've definitely felt a lot of anxiety. So I think it was you know, obviously doing my research, like you said, it's very important, but also knowing that each one's experience is so different. Like just from Jody's first anxiety attack to the second one, they're completely different in, in how she's feeling and the weight of it. I mean, the first time you have an anxiety attack, it's it's literally chemicals in your body freaking out. And then your brain is going, what is going on? Like what I've never experienced this. So it's an, it's like another level of fear on top of what's happening in your body. So being able to experience that was um, crazy. I remember my first take, I, I feel like there was so much just built up to that day because it's obviously just a very pivotal point in the movie and the first take I literally lost like feeling in my arms and legs like they were tingling so much which that was the point where I was like okay I'm crazy because I really enjoyed just having an anxiety attack but oh my god acting is the coolest thing ever because I'm actually like feeling what it's like to to experience that which was a crazy experience (laughs) there's also a difference between the two anxiety attacks that she has as well because the first one you know, is the one where she's with her parents, her mom kind of knows how to talk her through it and to help her focus and help her breathe. And then the second time it happens right before the school show, she's by herself in that instant. And so it's a really different space of her having to walk herself through it. Um, Mm -hmm. And so did that also make a really key difference for you when you came to filming that second scene? Yeah, I did. I think, you know, it's that, it's that juxtaposition of of yourself freaking out and then you trying to parent yourself and it's trying to pull yourself out of that moment of freaking out and really just um, try to contain it, which is hard. I feel like it's just that constant fight of I'm fine. No, I'm not fine. I'm fine. You know? Um, And then I think it's also cool that, you know, we don't have the parents in that film, but I feel like Kimmy comes in and somehow, is that for her is the same that her parents were for her that she calms her down and she relates to her and she's there for her. And I think seeing that out of the most unexpected people is really important because I think in a lot of those times when we are having an anxiety attack, we don't want to lean on people and we don't realize that we could lean on pretty much anyone and they will support us and be there for us. Um, Which I think is just a good thing that anyone, especially, you know, young teenagers can learn from this film. Yeah. And it's also something where throughout this movie, Jody is got kind of like realizing how how much everybody has their own insecurities as well and has their own struggles. You know, and the fact that that Kimmy doesn't see the anxiety attack as anything unusual. She's like, I'm a teenager in America. Like, of course, I've had them. You know, I know what this is. Yeah. Um you know, and so how for you did that kind of open up Jody throughout the film in her relationships with other people, even people that are just peripheral to her at school and just kind of having a different understanding of everybody around her? 
Yeah, I think one of my favorite things while reading the script was how much we really dove into everyone else's story. Everyone had a backstory, especially Farida, something I loved. We meet her family, we see her life, we see her passion and her her little like quirkiness. Um, and so, yeah, I think it was it's really important because Jody, I feel like when you isolate yourself, you really feel like you're the only one going through what you're going through. And I think when we reach out, we realize that we're not alone. And for some reason that gives us so much more stability in what we're going through. So I think, you know, like I said, I think this is all just a really, really important lesson that like isolating yourself is not the way, even though it feels good sometimes. It's like, we really truly need to reach out to these people and not everyone, everyone that we think is, is confident and is secure and is perfect is not and they're going through their own things so i think understanding that is um i feel like very important in life as well all of the people you know you see on social media and you look up to and you see this perfect version of their life when you meet them it's not no one's life is perfect they're going through their own things so um yeah i just think it really rings true right now it's also really great that the script for this film included certain moments of, of Jodie experiencing people making similar comments that they did in the first film and just really getting to see the juxtaposition in how she emotionally feels and responds in the way that it doesn't, you know, isolate her in that way anymore. Yeah. And so what was that experience of getting to film certain scenes that had those callback moments, but really find a completely different space for Jodie to be in with everything that she's gone through at this point? Yeah, it's great because I feel that too. Like I used to go through when people would make comments about my height in public, I would take it personally and it would hurt and I would kind of shut down. And I think that it's, it's who you give the power to. I mean, if you are taking that too personally to yourself, you're giving them all the power in the world. And I think like, I, I, there was this, um, saying that I'm going to botch, but it's like, if you, if you wouldn't take advice from that person, why does anything that they say really matter? You know, if I'm not going to come to you for advice, then why is what you're saying hurting me? Because I actually don't care what you're saying about me because you don't know me. So um, I think, like you said, just watching that and seeing that it kind of, she has this shield up for it. Um, or it kind of just goes in and goes out, um, which is, is really nice to see. It's something that I've experienced recently. Every time someone comes up and asks me if I'm a basketball player, I'm like, best you've ever seen. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but it, it doesn't hurt anymore. And I feel like I can just kind of have fun with it. Yeah. I really love that mantra. That's so great. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about Jodi's journey through the high school musical, because it's such a pivotal part of, of her story in this film. Um, and it's also great because it pulls in so much of your own experience in terms of dancing and singing. And so how did you determine, you know, obviously Jodi's doing this performance. This is the first time that she's performed in this way, even though she's had a real passion for, uh, for it for a long time. Um, and so how did you determine things like, well, what is it going to be like for her when she first opens her mouth and sings on stage? Because this is something that she's feeling a lot of anxiety about, even though you yourself may not be feeling the same level and that degree of it. And even just what are her moods? movements as a dancer, as someone who's still kind of figuring herself out in that way? Yeah, I feel like this is something that I really struggled with in the beginning. I feel like the singing, um, it was funny, I was in the studio for the singing and I have my own demons, of course. So I was singing it and like trying to get it note perfect and trying to get everything in. Uh, the producer looked at me and she was like, Ava, <laughs> sing it like Jody." So I want you to be Jody on stage singing it right now. And because we did, we um, recorded the music before we even started filming. So this was like my first I'm Jody since 2018, 2019. Um, so, and that was my best take. And, and it was just funny to see how I, re when it's not me, I don't judge myself. When it's Jody, I don't judge myself which I thought was really interesting and in being able to just experience that. But the dance part was something that I actually had so many conversations about because I feel like a lot of people know that I'm a dancer. They know that I've, I've grown up dancing and finding that where Jody is, is, is hard. You know, I didn't, I didn't think we should portray her as a bad dancer the entire time because I do think she would put in the work to, to get where she could be. Do I think she's had the same amount of training that I have? No, but I kind of just made the decision that her mom put her in dance classes when she was younger. And then she stopped because she felt too tall. So it's like, you kind of just 
set yourself up with a little bit of that support. And then I feel like it's like, she's a little awkward in the beginning. She's getting back into it, but then maybe some of that, that history from, from class comes in and, and she's confident in her performance. Yeah. I also enjoy the fact that we get to see, you know, different snippets of the, sh- it's not like, oh, we see one moment of her performing on stage and coming through it. And we get to see different moments of what it's like for her to overcome that, that inner monologue within herself as well. At the beginning when she's singing, when she has that moment where her biggest fear of forgetting a line comes true on stage, um, you know, and was it really helpful to you that there was almost like so much meat to the scenes and it, it wasn't just a 30 second snapshot. You really got to kind of choreograph and figure out what the entire scene was going to be within the movie. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, we started dance rehearsals before filming. We had a whole week of dance rehearsals. And then while filming, we were just constantly rehearsing. And so just honestly being on set, because I obviously I grew up as a dancer, being on set and being the actor and not the dancer was the weirdest thing for me, because I'm like, normally I would walk in and I would be one of the dancers, which was great. Um, So we all of us dancers like got to hang out and have rehearsal, which just like fed my soul. It was amazing. But yeah, I think when we got on stage and saw the sets that they had created and how big of a production it really was, it was amazing. It was very cool to be able to live in that. I just felt like I was living out my high school musical dreams just a little bit. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I mean, even that scene to where I, I forget my line. It's like, obviously there's so much backstory and watching that, you know, the musical and knowing exactly who everyone is and going, like, I actually felt like I was in a musical, which I've never been in before. I never did theater. My, my school didn't really have that much of a theater program. So um, yeah, it was very cool. But now you got to do it and be the lead. Exactly. I'm like, tall girl is my high school. It is my theater experience. It is my homecoming. This has been because I was homeschooled for high school. So this is this is my experience. And I got to say, it's pretty great. It's pretty yeah. good. <laughs> and you were, you were saying before that you were filming all of you were recording all of the music and, and the vocal performances for that before the film. Were you also having to record all of the inner dialogue that she has within herself throughout the film before you went into filming? And, and what was that like finding that particular space as well? Because that's a very unique head space to have to find for her early on. It is. And that was something that I feel like everyone in the film was kind of struggling with a little bit. I think it was like finding that space and her her voice is her own character. So it really was like developing another character and seeing where she lived. Um, so yeah, I would, we were on set and I'd like go off and just do a couple lines and then we would kind of play it while the scene was going. But I, I did a lot of ADR for this film. So I was, I was in a lot for the voice of just like, what is the voice saying? What, what does your inner voice actually say to you? And I think the beginning and the first draft, we kind of felt like it was too on the nose of like what we would think our voice would say, but it's not really what our, our brain knows how to hurt us. And I feel like it's saying the things that it knows is going to get to you. And so I think finding that and finding her kind of temperament, she's kind of like that, like, mean valley girl like mean girl you know and your head which is the worst she's not just like screaming at you angry from what's that movie that has like all the emotions you know i'm talking about inside inside out inside out yes yeah (laughs) she's not like the red guy and she's not like the mean girl she's like kind of in between (laughs) um so yeah it was just it was fun finding finding that and there was a lot of options though so watching the film I had no idea what she was going to be saying (laughs) and given that you had the experience of the entire first movie behind you when you came into this film but obviously there's a whole new set of of challenges and and figuring out all those new spaces for Jody and for your performance what were the things that you found were the challenges in making the second film for you yeah, for me, I, I will say one of the biggest challenges I feel like was the, the COVID protocol. I feel like being on a set that didn't have it and then being on a set with it was just such a different experience. I'm a very connecting people person and I love to hug people and I love to talk to the crew and I love to see them and not being able to see their face until the last day was like one of the hardest things ever. And I just feel like you kind of feel more isolated than you should when you're wearing a mask and a shield and like nobody can really talk to each other. So that experience was um, very different, but I think 
another thing was just I feel like the expectations that kind of came with making this film it's like I was really excited to go in and and have the growth that I have from the first film and the work that I've done since but it was it was a lot of pressure I feel like that I didn't really realize was going to come until I was there of just like okay, we're, we're making another one of these and I don't want it to just be a sequel. I want it to be a film that really stands on its own and can mean just as much to people, if not more. So I feel like I kind of had to throw that away sometimes and be like, you know what, we're making what we're making and we're, I'm just going to you know do the best I can. But it definitely, I felt a pressure in that that I didn't feel the first film. Yeah. Well, it really is a film that stands on its own and it was so great to see you reprise this role. Congratulations on everything with the film and thank you so much, Ava. Well, thank you. This was great.